recognize your precious anointing this morning. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for those that are still traveling to get here, God, that you would give them traveling mercy, send forth the angels, God, and open up the highways so they can get here quickly, God. And Father, we pray for those that are too sick to be in the house of the Lord this morning, that wherever they are, wherever they're going through, that you would lift them up to you, Lord, for encouragement this morning. And Father, we pray for our nursery, we pray for our babies in the nursery, Lord, that they will be filled the love of Jesus while they're in there, Lord, and we pray for our children in our children's church department this morning. And Father, we just give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody says, Amen. Amen and Amen. So this morning, we're going to have what I call flip the flow service. Flip the flow service. We did this last week, and what that simply means is that, is that we're just doing everything in reverse. I'm going to preach first, and then we're going to sing later. Amen? Amen. Now some of y'all look at me like a deer in the headlights last week. Like, what in the world is that preacher doing? And y'all thought I done lost my mind. Y'all thought, well, is this, is this scriptural? Can you do this? Is this illegal? No, it's not. It's not illegal. It's not in the Bible anywhere that says that you can't preach first and sing later. Amen? But there's a special reason that I'm doing this today. And uh, that I did it last week. It's because we're on a series called Seek Ye First the kingdom of heaven. Seek you first the kingdom of God. Amen? And that's what this is all about. So we want to dismiss our children for children's church. Come on, children. Go, go with me, Mom. Go now. Miss Angel. Miss Angel. Angel. All right. Give our children a big hand. Come on, babies. You'll be all right. Come on, baby. Let me have to help these little bit. Miss Lexi helped drive the moment. All right. Praise the Lord. It's so good to see children in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen? I have many evangelists that tell me when they come through that they don't see children in the house of God anymore. As they travel throughout the country, they say that's one thing they see missing is they don't see babies and they don't see children in the house of the Lord anymore. And I know for many years I didn't see men in the house of the Lord. I know it's one of the things that thrilled me when I came here to see men in the house of God again. Turn your Bibles to the book of Matthew, the 6th chapter, look at the 33rd verse. And uh, I'll ask you to stand for the reading of God's Word when you get there. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. Alright, this is part 2 of Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God. Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God, part 2, starting with Matthew, the 6th chapter, and verse 33. I've been having the privilege on Thursday nights, the past two Thursday nights, of actually teaching this to our teenagers. And I, I tell you, we've really been getting into some good stuff. And so some of the things I talk about this morning might just be some, some spillover from them. Amen? How many of y'all know our teenagers need to know the Word of God? Amen. Amen? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. The words written in red, remember, written by the Lord Jesus Christ, and shed on that cross and died, His blood is what bought these words. Think about that as we read this. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Father, we thank You for the reading of Your holy word this morning. Father, we thank You, Lord, for... All the blessings in our lives, God. We thank you for the anointing. Father, we pray for Mount Holly Church this morning, God, that you will be with Brother Jeff this morning, God. Lord, that your hand will be upon them. And Father, we pray for all of our churches, God, all of our sister churches, God. Lord, that your anointing today will be there, God. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen, amen and Amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all keep Mount Holly in prayer. Keep uh, Pastor Jeff in prayer. I spoke to him this morning, and they are voting on uh, Brother Jeff to become the new pastor of Mount Holly. Uh, Brother Gatton is now retired, so we, we praise God for that. We praise God for their growth, and we want to continue to pray for them. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, one of the things I ask the, teacher, or the, the teenagers to say is, what is these things? What are these things that are to be added to us if we seek you first the kingdom of God? If you go back, we just go back up to verse 24, verse 24 all the way down to 33, it begins to talk about these things. 
Where God said, why do you worry about what you're going to wear? Why do you worry about what food you're going to eat? Why do you worry about tomorrow? And he gave a whole list of things that people worry about on a day-to-day -day basis. How many of you ever had to worry about food in the kitchen? Raise your hand. You had to worry at some point in your life whether we had food in the kitchen or not. Amen? I've been there. How I many you worry about, well, do I, have, do I have some clothes to wear tomorrow? Have you ever had your washing machine break down? Do you get the clothes for tomorrow? Amen? I've been there too. Amen? So we worry about these things. We worry about our automobiles. We worry about gas prices. We worry about can we pay the electricity bill. We worry about all these things of the world that you and I need to live in. Amen? But look at what Jesus says. If you seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, then all these things will be added to you. All these things. So there's, there's a principle here. Jesus is telling us to put first the kingdom of God. In other words, make the kingdom of God your top priority. Your top priority in life. Now today, today is Pentecost Sunday. And today we celebrate the day of Pentecost. Over 2,000 years ago, this was the day at 9 o'clock in the morning when the Holy Ghost came down in that upper room. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. When the day of Pentecost would fully come, in that upper room, 120 souls in one accord. You know, I always say that's a miracle right there. You can get 120 people on one accord, that's a miracle. I have a hard time just getting 25 people on one accord. Amen? So imagine 120 people with one mind and one purpose, and it was a seeking first the kingdom of God. Yes. Yes. Amen? It was to pray and to seek for the baptism of the Holy Ghost on that day, because Jesus says, go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. Now, like I told you last week, He spoke these words over 500 men and brethren, is what it says in 1 Corinthians. So 500 men and brethren, he spoke these words too. But only 120 souls were in an upper room and they wouldn't all be in. Come on. Mary Magdalene was there. Mary, the mother of Jesus was there. Hello. What happened to the other men? Where are the men at? And here's the thing that you and I need to realize today is they weren't out fishing somewhere. No. They wasn't out visiting family or eating barbecue. They didn't fire up the barbecue grill or just took a holiday off. No. They were commanded in the Old Testament to be in Jerusalem on this day. Because this day goes all the way back to the book of Leviticus. It is the day of celebration of the harvest feast. How many of y'all got gardens at home? Amen. My, my daughter sent us a picture of a cucumber. She's already got a cucumber sprouting. Amen. You got some cucumbers at home sprouting? Amen. I know she's got, she's got a garden herself and she's got little things growing. But you know, Brother Larry, you and I were out there planting on that field last year about this time. We were planting our tomato plants and, and we were planting our okra and our corn and all that. I love to see okra, corn and okra coming up out of that ground. I just love to see that happen. Amen. I love to see a, a beautiful garden. Sometimes, I was, actually I was driving toward, uh, toward Raymond just the other day. I looked over on the right hand side and I said, oh, look at that beautiful garden somebody's planting. Amen. Then I saw an old man wearing overhauls with one of those chillers. He can go that way. Amen? Because it takes hard work to get them gardens going. But see, this is, this is a day of celebration that God told Israel, come to the temple on this day. This is the day of Pentecost, the feast or the celebration of the harvest to come. He wasn't talking about the harvest they had in their hands, but the harvest to come from the garden. Amen? How I many of y'all know we are in the end of time right now? We're in the last days of the last days of the last days. We are here. The trumpet of God is about to blow. Let me tell you, we are in the time when the harvest of God is about to grow. Come on. The harvest of God is about to sprout. And we're going to have to be reaped up, amen, in the rapture on that glorious day. So on this day, all of Israel would have been in Jerusalem. They would have been at the temple. But Jesus told the 500 men and brethren, go and wait for the promise of the Father. 
Wait for the promise of the Father. I assure you there was more room in that upper room that the 120 were in. I assure you there would have been more room for the rest of them. But where were they at? You see, they did not have any value in what Jesus told them. He said to go away for the promise of the Father, but instead they decided to do something else. You see, that's where so many people are today. They decide to go do something else when they need to be in the house of God. Amen? When they need to be in the house of God. Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it says that when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So the day of Pentecost had fully come. And today is that day. Will you stand to your feet this morning? And can we just give God some old-fashioned praise right now in the house of the Lord for the day of Pentecost and fully come? commanded to, 
Forsake not the assembling of ourselves together is what Paul said. Yes. And come and seek God. Do you realize we are tithing our time? We are tithing our week. Because we stop what we're doing. Come on. Amen. Listen to me, folks. It's a beautiful day out there. Amen. We could, we, some of us have not fired up our barbecue grills yet. Today would be a beautiful day to do that. But instead of firing up the barbecue grill, we said, no, today's Sunday, and I'm going to the house of God. Yes. Amen. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. And I choose to rejoice yes. and to be glad in it. Amen. Yes. I choose to rejoice. You see, it's your choice. God's not going to knock you over the head. An angel ain't going to come and grab you by your collar and drag you out of your house and change you from your pajamas to your clothes and drag you to your car and then push your car down the road and then open the door for you and throw you into the sanctuary. Oh, believe me, I wish it worked that way. Believe me, I, I wish it worked that way. I say, Archangel Michael, Gabriel, and all you others, go out there, pull them out of bed, comb their hair, throw them in the shower, whatever you got to do, throw them shoes on, drive a car for them if you have to. Just get them to the house of God. I wish it worked that way, but they don't. Amen? How are y'all with me? Y'all wish it worked that way? Y'all got some kids. Y'all wish God would do that too, don't you? Amen. Amen. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. You see, going to church has got to be a top priority in our life. And when it's not a top priority in our life, then we're simply telling God He just isn't important. Hello. We're simply telling God you're just not important enough. Oh, but how many of y'all know He really is? Yes. See, we've got to make seeking, seek first the kingdom of God a top priority in our life. Every time the doors of the church are open, I'm telling you, you need to make arrangements in your life to be in the house of God because it is must, it must be top priority in our life in order for us to seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Oh, amen. amen. I, I've said this once, I've said it twice, I'll probably say it five more times. Going to church is just as much as God's plan of salvation as it is that prayer you prayed when you asked Jesus to come into your heart. There's so many souls that ask the Lord to come into their heart, but they did not have a sincere heart. They were not sincere in their prayer, and they walked right out of the church, and they never come back. Amen. And they're just as lost as they were when they came the first time. Because life has to change for us. We must put priorities in our life. Remember what Jesus said, seeking first the kingdom of God and all these what? Things. God knows how much money you need to pay your bills. He just wants you to put Him first. He knows you need a decent car to drive back and forth. He just wants you to put Him first. Amen? He knows what you have need of before you ever ask Him. He just wants you to put Him yes. first. Amen. Number one priority in our life has to be God. It has to be God. There are people not in church today that call themselves Christians. But you know what? It's not a priority in their life to be in the house of God. And I'm not just talking about Bible church and God. I'm talking about church in general. Throughout the world. Amen? There is people on membership rest right now washing their car because it's a pretty day. Washing their car. How many of y'all know that's idol worship? Amen? I don't know why you washed your car because the Apostle Peter said it's going to burn in a fervent heat. Amen? Everything on this planet is going to burn. Your house is going to burn. Your bank account is going to burn. Your car is going to burn. And those 15 pairs of shoes you got in your clothes is going to burn. Amen? Amen? It's going to go. I can't take my wife anywhere without her having her own special suitcase for her shoes. I said, honey, what do you all these shoes for? I don't know what I'm going to wear until I get there. I don't understand that. I just don't get it. I don't think I ever will. Amen. I think me and Brother Tim both have come to one conclusion. 
We'll never understand the women. We just won't understand. Them. Amen. We're going to leave it up to God to understand them, but we don't get it. Amen. How many of y'all with me this morning? Somebody said, preacher, you need to move on. Okay. The third way that we need to seek God is by putting His Word first. Put His Word first. That's why I flip the flow on the service. Because we, too many people are putting more value on the singing and not enough value on the Word. Come on. There is people, listen, some of them got mad at me last week because I flipped the flow. They want to sing their little song. Amen. You see, some people, want, they want to hear their favorite song, and then if we have enough time, we'll let the preacher preach. Come on. Amen. Listen, we've got, we got to reverse our priorities. We've got to put the hearing of the Word of God first. Right. My teenager will tell you, they can, they, they, I've been teaching them Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Say it with me. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. This is why it's so important to put God's Word first. If you need faith in your life, you must put God's Word in your heart. You must put God's Word in your ears. It's got to get to your eardrum before it ever gets to your heart. It's got to get to your eyes before it gets to your heart. You've got to hear it. You've got to receive it. You've got to read it. That's why the preaching of God's Word under the anointing is so important. Yes. It's so important because you must be a hearer of God's Word in order for faith to grow. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them who do what? Diligently seek him. That means you've got to seek him with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul. They asked Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? He said, the love of the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, and all thy soul. In other words, put God first. Put God first. All these problems that people are having in life, listen to me, your family drama is because you're not putting God first. The crisis in your life is because you're not putting God first. Come on. Everything that we go through all the storms of life, all the drama from the family, all these things. How many of y'all got family drama out there? Angel and I had to go back home last week. Went back to our old high school. Angel, you know, high school looks bigger when you're a kid. I don't know why, but I thought about high school was much bigger than it was. But while we were there at the funeral, we got to hear about all the family drama. I don't think I've ever been to a funeral yet and didn't hear about family drama. Can I get a witness? Amen. Why do we have so much family drama? Why do we have so much problems in our life? Why are we fighting all these things in the world? It's because we need to put God first in our life. We put God first Jesus said all the things you need will be added to you. Amen. Amen. If we put God first, we won't be worried about all these things. Because God will take care of them. Amen. Amen. We're getting ready to go to youth camp. Taking these teenagers. God, just pray for us. Lord, have mercy. Angel and I, it's been a long time since Angel and I have been with a group of kids going to youth camp. I thought those days were behind me. In my younger days. Now, now that I'm older here, I go again. Amen. But I can remember a few years ago. I think it was 2006. When our house burned down. And we had bought a little country house out in Bremen. A little farmhouse. It used to be called a Duke Farm. About 130 acres. We bought the house. We didn't get the 130 acres, but we bought the house in two acres. 
And we were going to fix this little house up in built 1920, I think they said when it was built. It was a beautiful little home, and we were going to we were renovate it and fix it up. And it was, I mean, we just loved the property. We just loved the house. But one day the house burnt. We were six days away from going to youth camp that year. And it wasn't that I would just take the kids to youth camp. I was actually the director of the camp. I had to be there. I was the one that organized it. Angel was our, was our cook. She had to be there. So I had no choice but to be there. And I can remember on the way home, let me tell you, I'm coming out of Alpharetta, Georgia. Anybody know where Alpharetta's at? And I got my truck running about 100 miles an hour. I got my flashers on. And I still had people in Atlanta passing me like I was too slow. Hey Amen. That's why I don't like to go to Atlanta today. And on the way home, I heard the devil say, Well, you can't go to camp now. You ain't got a home. You're homeless. Well, at home, my wife was at home. And I didn't know it at the time when the devil told her exactly the same thing. Probably at the same exact time. You can't do camp now. You're going to have to shut it down. You've got to worry about where you're going to live. You've got to worry about your clothes. I mean, we didn't have clothes. We had nothing. The only thing we had was what we had on our backs. We had to go down here to, to Fridge, I think it was Fridge or Family Dollar somewhere, and buy some shirts and some clothes so we had something to change into the next day. We lost everything in that fire. And the devil said, you can't go. You ain't got nothing. You ain't got no clothes. You ain't got no money. You ain't got, you ain't got no home when you get back. You can't go. But I heard the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, thank God for the day of Pentecost. I heard the Holy Ghost on the inside of me that says, how can you not go now? And I heard God speak up. He said, son, you take care of my business and I'll take care of yours. Woo, glory to God. Long story short, we went on to youth camp that year, had no idea what was going to happen, but as soon as we got back from youth camp, the insurance man met us and put a check in our hand. We had enough money to go out and buy a camper. We had enough money to go out and hire a contractor. And that contractor said, you want me to build your 1920 farmhouse back again? Or you want me to build you a brand new one? We said, no, sir. Build our dream house. We got a dream house in Mountain that came out of that fire. Because we put God first. We seek the kingdom of God first. We take care of God's business first. And he'll take care of your business. He took care beyond what we ever dreamed possible. Woo, I'm telling you. I still got that house today. My daughter lives in it. My grandchildren are growing up in it. Well, I'm hanging out with you folks. But that's all right. I know whose name's on the mortgage. Hey, hey. Probably got to go cut grass tomorrow over there anyways. Amen. But all that happened, and I'm not bragging on me an angel. I'm bragging on God. We put God first. We still put God first. I said, we still put God first. But we've got to learn to put the Word of God first. Turn the Bible to Job chapter 23, verse 12. And I can tell I'm not going to finish this today. There's just no way. Job chapter 23, verse 12. When I got told the teenagers, you can't find Job, just find Job. There's a job in the Bible. Amen. I love telling people, God wants you to have a job. You wrote a whole chapter about it right there. Job. Amen. Job chapter 23 verse 12 says, Neither have I gone back from the commandments of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Look at what Job is saying. Job is saying, I care more about the word of God and I do put the food in my belly. I care more about the Word of God and the hearing and the reading and the receiving of the Word of God more than I care about putting food in my belly. When was the last time you pushed the plate away and said, I'm just going to seek God? Amen? You hang out with me, you're going to do it at the first of the year. Y'all know that? Amen? 21 day Daniel fast. We're going to go through it every year. But we push back the plate 
to seek the kingdom of God and make the kingdom of God first. This is what Job was saying. I esteem the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Yes. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 says, My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ears into my sayings. Verse 21 of Proverbs chapter 4 says, Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. For they are life. What is life? The words of God. For they are life to those that find them and help to all their flesh. The word of God is help to all your flesh. Mm -hmm. Seek you first the kingdom of God by seeking Him through His word. Seek ye first the kingdom of God by seeking Him. Seeking the kingdom of God by His word. By His Word. This is why a few months ago I asked the church to join me in reading a chapter every day. Right now we're in 1 Corinthians. Read a chapter with us every day. The whole church together. We're putting God's Word first. Put God's Word first. Do you value God's Word more than your necessary food? Can you push back the plate of food and, and, and feed off of the Word of God? Jesus told the disciples one time when they, they were talking about eating your food, and Jesus said, I have food you know not of. They said, they looked at one another, did somebody come and feed Jesus? And finally he explained himself that his food was to do the will of God. That was his food. To do the will of God. To do the will of God. Church, we must do the will of God in our lives. Amen. King Solomon said, The Word of God is life to those that find it in hell to all their flesh. How many realize, just by listening this morning, as I'm talking to you, as I'm preaching to you this morning, you can receive healing for your body, a physical healing. Come on. There you go, Charlie. Just reach your hands up in the air and grab it. Anybody else need some healing this morning? Just reach up and grab it. You can receive healing from the preaching of the Word of God. I don't even have to lay hands on you. I don't have to anoint you. You can receive healing because you are hearing the Word of life. Woo! Glory to God. See why the Word of God must be first? See why we must value the Word of God? Yes, we can receive healing during singing, and many people have. You can receive a lot of blessings during music, many people have. You have, I have. But church, we must put the Word of God first. It must have value in our life. How much money have you personally invested in hearing the Word of God? How many Bibles have you gone out to buy? How many buy? I don't know how many Bibles I have, Bonnie. I mean, people give me Bibles, and I bought Bibles, and I've got more Bibles than I can read. Every time my wife wants another Bible, I say, what's wrong with the one you already got? Read one of them. But how much money have you invested in hearing the Word of God? How many days off of work have you missed so that you could be in a revival service and hear the Word of God? Come on. How many things in your life have you canceled and said, no, I can't go there because I'm going to hear the Word of God? Amen. You see, when something is valued to you, then you spend your hard-earned dollars to hear it and to be there. Like somebody said, if something's important to you, you'll be there. Amen? But you hold value to something. The Word of God must have value in our lives. It must. This is why we pay tithes. This is why we give an offering. Because we value the Word of life. It must take priority in our life. It must be number one. And if it's not number one, I got news for you. God won't hang around and be number two. He says, I'm a jealous God. I'm a jealous God. 
You should have no other gods before me. And there's a lot of people with a lot of gods this morning that's keeping them out of church. <coughs> Amen? But we must put God's word first in our life. We must take the listening of God's word serious. You know, it's amazing to me how many people come up with all kinds of excuses on why they can't come to church. You know, I've got a headache, I've got a backache, I'm exhausted. And, uh, uh, my friend came into town, family came in, and, and was up all night. But yet, on Monday morning, with all the same excuses, you get up and drag yourself to work and punch that time clock. Come on. People will go to work with a headache. People will go to work with the flu. People will go to work with their backache. People will go to work broke. Come on, somebody. Well, my, my car broke down. I couldn't get to church. But you found a way to get to work when your car was broke down. Come on. Amen. We make all kinds of excuses on why we don't go to the house of God on Sunday, but we don't make these excuses to our boss because you know our boss won't listen to it. Amen. And some people will tell you that, you know, you get three points on your record. They're going to fire you anyway. You don't want to do that. So they will go out of their way without sleep, exhausted, tired, and broken. You will still go to work. Why can't we put the same effort to give it to God? Hey, come on. Why can't we put the same effort to God? Well, Pastor, I'm here. I didn't get no sleep last night, but I'm here. Praise God. I'll lay hands on him. We'll pray God give you energy. He can do it. Amen. Amen. Oh, come on. This is good word this morning. I said this is good word this morning. Amen. Psalms 119, verse 27 says, Therefore, I love thy commandments above gold, yea, above fine. Go. Psalms 119. How many of y'all have read the entire chapter of Psalms 119? It's the longest psalm there is. This verse is actually verse 127. <laughs> this is the 127th verse of Psalms 119. But if you go back and carefully read Psalms 119, and I encourage you to do that sometime today, you will realize the entire psalms is about the Word of God. It's about valuing the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. It's about valuing the Word of God. Last scripture I'm going to give you this morning, and I'm going to ask Brother Tim to come and sing, is Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Listen to what Joshua was saying. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. He's talking about the Word of God, folks. He's talking about the Word of God, that we should meditate in the Word of God day and night. That we may observe to do according to all that is written. Listen to what James said. Be a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. But a doer of the word. Amen. And according as it is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success. Look at what God is telling Joshua. Meditate on the word of God day and night. Meditate on the word of God day and night. And then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. Go back to what Jesus said. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. It goes hand in hand, folks. How many of y'all remember that faith believes, faith speaks, and faith acts? Look at this. Faith believes is the book of the law that I take day and night. Faith speaks, this law should not depart from your mouth. Faith acts, observe, and do according to all that is written. If we value God, then we'll value His Word. Let me say that again. If we value God, 
then we will value his word. If we value his word, then we'll value his church. Let me say that again. If we value his word, we'll value his church. And we'll value his true preachers of his word. We'll value them. We'll value the church. Brother Tim's getting ready to come and sing for us. I want to ask everybody to stand. This is going to be our altar call this morning. So come on. Brother Tim's getting ready to sing. Everybody just close your eyes and just examine your heart right now. Just examine your heart. Have I put God first in my life? Have I put God first in my life? Is God my number one top priority? Is God my number one top priority in my life? These altars are open this morning. If you need to have a little talk with Jesus, would you come on down to these altars? As you answer that question for yourself, is God number one priority in your life? Do you seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and His righteousness? These altars are open. If you need prayer this morning for sickness in your body, once you come, we'll obey the Scriptures, we'll anoint you with oil, we'll pray with you and pray for you this morning. And Brother Tim gets ready to sing. When you come, go ahead, brother. I've had many tears and sorrows yes. I've had questions for tomorrow There's been times I didn't know right from wrong And Trust in Jesus. 
Sweet.